All right, Chris Hall here for Dogs on Demand on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and all that other stuff where we uh, you can find us on social media. It's good to have you with us on our program today, and it's good to have Ken Veal uh, with us as well. Ken played for the University of Georgia, the Bulldogs, back in the day. Nose tackle, right, Ken? Nose yes, tackle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Started out as a regular three technique, but when uh, Coach Van Gorda came in, um, they wanted something a little more robust. You know, they wanted – Jonathan Sullivan was the other defensive starting defensive lineman. And for, the, for the folks who know, Jonathan went, I think, seventh in the first round when he, when he went out. And, um, the funny thing about it was that, you know, they was arguing about the coaches going back and forth, like, when I, who needs to play three technique and da-da-da. And I finally said, y'all really don't care about this being a nose guard, you know. I'm, I don't mind fighting two guys every play. It's, it's, just bring it on. <laughs> and they looked at each other, my, my position coach and Coach Van Gordon, they were like, all right, let's run with it. And they stayed that way until Van Gordon wound up leaving. They had a dump, they had one person that plays nose guard and one person plays three technique. But I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm wondering, you know, you're talking about your 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 uh, coach Van Gordon. Uh, do, do you keep up with coaches from back in the day when you played for Georgia? Uh, do you are you still in kind of contact with them? I know Coach Rick. You know, you're uh, still in contact with him, of course. But what about uh, what about your position coaches? You still keep up with them? Yes, Coach uh, Rodney Garner. He's uh, coaching yeah. at Tennessee right now. You know, his wife and and himself are both Facebook friends. It's kind of hard now, you know, me yeah. being an adult in here and, and him and still in the hustle and bustle of being a football coach in the SEC. But we do uh, reach out to each other every now and then and talk to each other on Facebook. Uh, his wife, a lot more than he does, uh, but he reached out, uh, God, a couple of months ago. Uh, it was a memory uh, when Coach Rick had, was uh, let go, and yeah. uh, and I told him a story about how uh, I uh, <laughs> decided I was going to quit the team. And Coach Rick, in a roundabout way, showed me life what life could present itself if you jumping out there in the life like that, and right. invited me back. And um, he, you know, we reminisced and laughed about it, and he just told me, you know. Basically, I just wanted you to be a great man. And, yeah. you know, and you've done that so far. And it touched me because, you know, yeah. coaches typically when you play a college ball are not warm and fuzzy. Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I to, be able to, say, yeah. <laughs> to be able to say you've done what I wanted you to do, it, it, it spoke volumes for me. So I'm real happy about that. Yeah, from what I know from coaches, uh, they can be warm, but not fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, not at all, not at all. Yeah, they, Coach, Coach Garner was his own beast. <laughs> yeah, got, uh, well, he's a good man, too. You know, Great we've, man, yes, sir. Yeah, we kind of kept up with him. I'm sorry he's at Tennessee, uh, you know. Uh, you got to be all. Yeah, you yeah, got to be uh, home, right? Well, <laughs> uh, remind us, remind us when you played for Georgia. Now, I rem I remember, you know, the, uh, the SEC championship game over Arkansas. Uh, yeah. You had a great game. You had a great game in that one now. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, remind us uh, uh, about your career at the University of Georgia. Oh, man, my career at Georgia. It, was, it had its ups and downs. Um, yeah. I started with Coach Dunning. Coach Dunning recruited me out of high school. Uh, I was uh, not toot my own horn toot toot, but I was, uh, you know, highly re uh, recruited. And yeah. I remember going through the, through the hustle and bustle of it, but Georgia felt like home. The people sounded like me, and uh, when I went up north, they didn't have grits. And so I said, no, nah, this ain't the place for me. <laughs> no, sir, I'm not, if I can't eat my grits, I'm not coming uh, to your school. <laughs> and, uh, and Coach Dunn set out a plate of all the food I could ever want. Um, you know, but during those years, uh, I had a great time. I played under some some greats, you know, Richard Seymour, Marcus Stroud. Kendra Bell went on, uh, Charles Grant. I told you about Jonathan Sullivan earlier. Yeah, yeah. Some greats that uh, I played with, but uh, the record just wasn't what, you know, what needed to be fit, and so they made a change to uh, Coach Rick. Yeah. And Coach Rick came in serious about football, serious about God, and serious about us being molding us into men. And, and frankly, Chris, we weren't at that point. Yeah. A lot of us that was left over after the aftermath of losing our first coach was just – Kind of finding our way, uh, yeah. young and, 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 and silly. And, uh, you know, we had some bumps in the roads. And, and I was the story I was alluding to earlier that, that coach, our position coach reached out to me and say, uh, is when I actually quit the team. Yeah. I don't know if I ever told you this story. I, uh, it was during a spring practice, and I had dislocated my shoulder, and I was coming off shoulder surgery. 
So I couldn't do anything, but I wound up gaining a lot of weight. So they wanted me to run and and get myself in some shape. Mind you, this is Coach Rick's, uh, I think that was, if I remember correctly, yeah, that was going into his second season, yeah. and that spring in between. Uh, so I thought that the strict conditioning coach was treat, mistreating me. So I just told him, yeah, you can take the scholarship and you can guess put the rest of it where it needs to go. <laughs> I understand, yeah. And, uh, and so I, I left and I decided, you know what, I'm for the transfer. This ain't for me. These new coaches are just crazy. And like I said earlier, Rotten the Garner, my, my position coach, he did something that, uh, that frankly, like changed the whole trajectory of my life. It kept yeah. me on track, basically. He called my grandmama and said, Miss Bill, your baby feelings is hurt. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he talking about coming home. He's leaving school. So whatever you do, don't let him come home. And mind you, I my, my grandmother told me this. God, probably about now, looking at it, about 10 years ago. She, I didn't know this happened. You know. Wow. wow. And so I, so I called the next morning. I was getting ready to, you know, get my bravado up to tell my grandmama, hey, what's, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So I called her, <clears throat> and I said, <clears throat> Granny, uh, it's not working out up here in Athens. I think I need to, you know, maybe look at going somewhere else. She said, well, baby, I'll never forget these words, Chris. <laughs> baby, you grown now. And you make your own decisions. I love you, but you can't come here. And so I remember having the phone to my ear, and I was like, huh? <laughs> she repeated herself verbatim. Baby, you're grown now. <laughs> you, you make your own decisions. I love you, but you can't come here. And I remember sitting there dazed. I was dazed. I said, oh, my goodness. Look. I said, well, Grandmama, let me go talk to these people. She said, you might want to go talk to them people up there. And hung up in my face. Oh, my so, goodness. Oh, I, I called Coach. I called Coach Rick the next day, and I, you know, basically had to swallow my pride and apologize. And he, I remember him sitting in my, sitting me in his office, and we just had a heart to heart. I was expecting fire and brimstone, but you know, he didn't present that. He yeah. just presented himself as a man and how people make mistakes, how people go about things a certain kind of way, and what he is, what he expects. So humbly, I asked, could I stay? And they accepted me. And a few months later, we won the SEC championship. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And you know, I, you know, I, but we love Coach Rick, and you know, and he's he's on on all of our prayer list. You know, we pray for Coach Rick and for his health issues. I've heard so many stories like that from former players or his players. Uh, you know, that he had on the team of how to this day still has a personal connection with him. You know, and he'll call them about this, that, and the other, and they'll converse. And you know, I, I remember, I you know, I didn't play football. I played basketball back in the day, and. I remember my coach, Coach Bub Denham. Uh, you know, he's he's gone on now. He's gone on to his heavenly reward. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing. It's amazing the impact yes. that coaches yes. have on you and what you remember just as you go through life. Uh, you know, that that relationship between a coach and a player, when it's really good and special, that's really something, isn't it? Just like yes. you're talking yes. about with Rodney Gardner and uh, Coach Rick. That's something, isn't it? It's, it's genuine. And – it's, it's a bond that, you know, it has to take a lot to break. And the, the fact that you have some another adult that's trying to guide you to be the best that you can. You know, right. not not fuzz, uh, warm and fuzz and not kissing on you, baby, it's going to be all right. But it's it's direct. And um, it's, just a, it's just solid and it's concrete. And young men need that, especially yeah. now more than ever, the guidance to be able to know that, you know, not everybody – uh, it's going to be patting you on your, on your butt, telling you everything's going to be okay. You know, because right. that's not life. That's not reality. You need to understand what's going on and how to operate through this world. You know, if we had your best, if someone had their best interest in heart for you to be successful, then it's, it's obviously you need to try to listen and hear what that message is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was, it would have been fun to kind of see you if you did go home to grandma. If, uh, when you walk on the front porch. I wonder what that reception would have been like. Would you have come out with a switch? I mean, as big well, as you were. <laughs> what, well, what this would is have My grandmama told me once I hung up the phone, she boo-hooed for about 20 minutes. <laughs> yes, she did. I can imagine, yes. And so if I would have went back home, I'm sure she would have hugged my neck and tell me, baby, to be okay. But I would know. I be the man I am today? Probably not. You know, yeah. So I'm thankful I had to deal with that tough message like that and move forward. There you go. Uh, we love our grandmas. You know, what? there you go. <laughs> the special bond that we have with our grandmas. 
Now, you, of course, now you, you're, you've got a son. How old is your son now? How, how old he's is he? Seven. He's seven. Seven years old. Yes, sir. He, he's playing football. Yes, um, sir. You know, and uh, he look. I, you know, I've seen some video. You know, and he looks pretty good. So, what's on his mind now at seven years old? Is he going to try to follow your footsteps or what? What? What's uh, you know? And how do you how do you navigate that? You know, you got one coming on, and you you I, you're a good you're a great dad. I know you're a great dad, and I've seen evidence of that. So how, how are you going to guide your seven-year-old son in this journey of perhaps playing high school football, maybe beyond? What do you think? Well, I'm trying to give him a wide berth, but make sure my hands are around him so he knows I'm there. I'm always there. For the most part, I want him to go through life not being controlled, but maybe guided to certain yeah. things. Uh, you know, football, he started last year for the first time. And at first, he was looking like a, a, a newborn horse, you know, <laughs> he was kind of kind of stumbling over himself because he's, he's always been the biggest on the team. When I say biggest, not just wide, but tall as well. And it still yeah. remains yeah. that way as, as we speak. But as the season go, went along, and I co actually coached him on the team last year, he started getting better and better, started recognizing wide feet, using your hands, uh, knowing where you need to line up at. And it, it just, it, it touched me. Especially when I look back at some of the film, you know, I'm just like, wow, he's he's actually getting it. And yeah. I didn't have uh, anyone to teach me that. You know, I just had to figure out this way blindfolded, just feeling my way through it. And the fact that, you know, he has somebody, has me to be able to help him guide us. Hopefully he has uh, a step up in the game, you know. I started my way into the NFL. Hopefully, he can start his way into the Hall of Fame. You know, that'd there be great. Go. go for it. <laughs> Why not? You know, why not? I mean, you look at your kid, and and he's got potential. And uh, <laughs> you know, we we before we started our program, I, I was kind of joking with you. I, I was observing you and him one time, actually in person. Uh, we were at a football camp, mm -hmm. and you you told your son you you need to run, you need to run hard, but you don't need to run but like five yards if you're gonna. <laughs> You gonna play offense or defensive line? You don't need right. to. <laughs> That's the secret. Give me your best for five yards. There if you, you can go. do that, the sky's the limit. You know. I understand. I understand. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about uh, you know the University of Georgia. Ken, uh, you know you want to. Uh, you guys won a SEC championship. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Excited, big win over Arkansas. Yes, I remember it well. Yeah, yeah, I remember it well. <laughs> My word, Ken. Hey, here we are. The, the University of Georgia has won back-to-back -back national championships. Wow. Um, you know, what What heady territory, uh, you know, the program is in at the moment. Uh, just your, your personal feelings as a University of Georgia former player, uh, you know, uh, from uh, and, of course, you're always a Bulldog. You love the Bulldogs, obviously. Right. What do you what do you think about this with back to back national championships? Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Like it's, I'm bursting with with pride. Ooh. It's the I you don't believe you, Chris. I don't know as as a former player. Uh, you know, we take wins and losses a lot differently than than your average fan or or your alumni. You know, it's who has a letterman like it, it hurts me. Like will Georgia will lose. I won't watch football to the next Saturday. Like, I feel like I didn't earn the right to watch football because my team lost. Yeah. And my wife, uh, bless her heart, she's from Alabama. She's an Auburn fan, you know. She can't okay. have it all. Bless her heart. I understand. I understand. Well, you know, she'll get right with the Lord one day. So. <laughs> one, day one day I'm praying. And I mean, hopefully it works. But, uh, you know, she's like, I used to love to watch football. She said, I hate football season now. And this was pre-national championships because right. we were so close. And the one uh, we lost to Alabama, who she almost had a yeah. championship emergency room. Yeah, that was a tough one. But I'm trying to tell you, this past season, after we won the first one, she looked at me one – it was one Saturday. She said, you know what? You have been so chill this season. <laughs> Baby, we, we, we reached the top. We reached the mountain yeah. top. I got my I'm natty. Good. I got I, my wife for a little bit now. Yeah, I got my natty, you know. And, there you <laughs> and for us to turn around and win it again, I'm so wow. proud of Kirby. You know, Kirby yeah. was a GA. I just missed playing with Kirby. Um, I got there in '99, so he, him, and Bobo were both GAs. And I remember us. You know, I was on scout team. Me and my buddies on scout team, and Kirby would lose his mind. Y'all give him a look and just run, just going ballistic. And Bobo would be like, "Man, Kirby, chill out, man, chill out," because 
You know, that wasn't like 19, 20. Oh, well, hold on. They were 23, 24 at the time. I was 19 at the time. Yeah. And I'm just like, who is this guy? Like, this guy is, <laughs> is a lunatic. And to see and to see him coaching them boys like they need to be coached, I am. Yeah. Man, he knew something then. I wish I would have caught on what he was talking about then. Golly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you, you think back to that time and the journey that he had, you know, uh, Valdosta State and, uh, you know, all the stops that he had. And then, of course, with Alabama and learning so much. And uh, my wife worries about Kirby. Uh, you know, she says uh, she watches him on the sideline, the intensity that he has, uh, you know, and she's, she's, she worries about him. I got to tell Kirby one of these days, you know, my, <laughs> my wife worries about him. She says, I hope he, I hope he has a hobby. I hope he does something to relax, but <laughs> he's so wired. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but he's, he's in on it. Um, you know, and what a marvelous job. I mean, yeah. what can you say? You know, I think for a coach, you reach, you reach, you know, such a milestone in your career when you win a national championship. I, I mean, th that's the crown jewel in your, you know, your, your crown as a, a college football coach. Then I, you know, to do it again, and of course, Nick Saban sitting over there with seven of them for heaven's well, sake. And, uh, Kirby now has two and, um, you know, that's, that's really got to be, that's got to be something, that sense of achievement. But I, I've, I get the sense that one makes Kirby so good is he's not going to rest on his laurels. No. You know, I, I, I sense that what he's saying to this team now is, okay, we've won two national championships, but y'all didn't do it. You know? Right. And, I, and think, I think that's the best message to take from it all. Yeah. That he's, yeah. not, he's not relaxed. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I like him high strong because high strong Kirby means he's still hungry Kirby. And yeah. I forever want to see a home Kirby coach uh, University of Georgia, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And his, his relentlessness on the recruiting trail is, uh, you know, and his staff, it's not just him. Uh, you know, if you can't recruit, you're not going to coach at the University of Georgia. Right. And the relentlessness that Georgia has on the recruiting uh, trail, the number one projected, uh, you know, class for 2024, again, the, you know, a number one class. Uh, is sitting out there. It it really is remarkable what uh, Georgia has done and Kirby Smart has done, and uh, let's just keep it going. So, uh, I, I, what do you think? Now, g give me your odds. Uh, you know, I, I remember last year when Georgia was playing in the national championship, a Florida fan posted this. The Florida fan said, "I hope Georgia wins the national championship." Because the chances of them winning it three times in a row is so small. <laughs> you got this Gator fan actually pulling for to win because, you know, they have no idea or conception that Georgia could win a third one. So well, let me ask you, can we do it again? Can Georgia do it again? I, most definitely I think we can, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to jinx it. Uh, I, I, think, I think it needs to happen, uh, but I think it needs to happen naturally. I think the way Kirby does it when each week is a new game, who cares about what the future holds? We need to take care of what we need to take care of now. I think he he has the talent to keep it going. So yeah. most definitely, I feel like that's something that, that we need to stick with. And we stick with that. I think the sky's the limit. Oh, the sky's the limit. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I talked to some of these guys from the recruiting services. And, the, you know, this is what they do. They study these recruits and, the, you know, they put the stars on them and all of that stuff. And one of the guys, very respected, told me, he said, look, you know, I, I think probably maybe not this year, but next year, the team that Georgia has next year will probably just talent wise be the most talented team that Georgia has put on the field wow. uh, in the past few years. And to say that, uh, you know, with two national championships and, uh, you know, they'll be competing for a third one, obviously this year, mm -hmm. that really is something I, I it just it's it's amazing to me. Uh, what Georgia has done. You know, I'm an old school Georgia guy. I watched, uh, you know, Herschel Walker in the game win the national championship in that Sugar Bowl game. Mm -hmm. I actually watched mm -hmm. the game. I was alive during that time. <laughs> and, I was uh, born there. Yeah. yeah, I was here too. Yeah, I was here. There you go. I was hey, watching football game. <laughs> yeah, you mean probably not. But, uh, you know, to go that long and then for Georgia to win it, it's just, it's just, um, uh, just amazing. Now you are you you were a defensive guy. You were down in the man. You were down in the ditches there with the guys. You know, nose tackle. Argh, you know, you're you're down in the uh, down in the trenches with the guys. Uh, but just your assessment of Georgia defensively. I mean, that's for me as good as Georgia has been offensively. That defense. That defense. Just uh, you know, controlling these teams, uh, not letting games get out of hand when the, there's that possibility. 
Uh, uh, give me your assessment as a defensive guy of how Georgia has been. all of these NFL draft choices and everything. Pretty impressive, isn't it? It's it's amazing. And I looked at it and I joked with my wife. I'm like, golly, you know, after I see we got another one, another number one, number yeah. number one. Like, I don't even know if I would have been good enough to, to make the team right now to be completely to be completely honest. I got uh, right. And I was an all American. So it, that's just wild to see just how they're able to pull that talent in. And you know, Athens is a little bit old town. Uh the, you know, the, the scene in the bar, downtown is 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 awesome, but it, that can't be enough to draw so much talent there. So it has to be something else. It's the coaching. It's being able to you know, hey, I can come up here and become a great player. I can come here as a good player and leave a great player. And that, you know, we have a reputation. Um, you know, they say, you know, Georgia, I say Georgia is, is, was tailback you for a while. I don't know about now. I think they say we linebacker you right now. Yeah, yeah. But at one time, uh, I did linemen. We had some of the best defensive linemen. You know, in the SEC, you know, we got a Hall of Famer, uh, Richard Seymour, Marcus Stroud, first round, uh, Charles Grant, first round, uh, John Sullivan, great people that play. And this was pre winning the national championship. And that's why I think Kirby doesn't get enough credit. He gets great credit for recruiting, but I don't think he gets enough credit for his uh, being able to turn talent, turn, uh, you know, water into wine, basically, turning right. some of these young men and molding them into great players that they wound up becoming. Yeah, I, I heard one of the recruits talking about, you know, how, how Georgia recruited him. And they basically just told him, look, if you come to the University of Georgia, we're going to run you. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. You're going to want to quit, you know, and, and it's going to be, you know, if you come to Georgia, you're going to run the gauntlet uh, through practices and it, it's going to be tough. But the end result will be when you're on the field, you're going to be the best one out there. Uh, sure. You're going to have a chance to win and you'll have a chance to go to the next level. And it's right. like a challenge, I think, to, you know, to a lot of the young players. Hey, you can go somewhere else. Yeah, you can go somewhere else. And and you, maybe you'll you'll prosper there. But if you come to Georgia, it's going to be tough. You know, they just they just tell them it's going to be tough. But the reward is going to be great if you'll I mean, stick. But, with think, but think about it, Chris. We have like first and second rounders that's not even starting on Georgia team getting drafted. Right. Yeah, amazing. You know, so it's really no excuse to say, oh, I ain't, I'm not getting playing time. If you come to Georgia, follow the program, what he's saying, and actually put your heart into the program, your your blessings are coming your way. Because yeah. you're going to leave a great player. You're going to leave a great man. And then the opportunities, oh, you from Georgia? Uh, so people already know, well, we know what Georgia men are like. Yeah. Come be a part of our team and be a part of our organization. Yeah, especially the Philadelphia Eagles. They yes, want all sir. the Georgia dogs, apparently. <laughs> Oh man! I was, I was an Eagles fan when I was a kid because they had Reggie, Reggie White. Oh, I yeah. was a big fan of Reggie White. So and Ronald, Ronald Cunningham, I was a fan of him. So yeah. now I'm back an Eagles fan. And it's just wild because yeah, I'm following them boys. Yeah, and, you know I can't. I don't know about rooting for that quarterback so much, but the defense, <laughs> I'm there for it all day. You know, I, I watched uh, Gunner Stock, or uh, not Gunner, the Stetson Bennett. I got, I've got Gunner on my mind. I was talking to. <laughs> But Stetson Bennett in his uh, NFL debut, uh, you know, the preseason Look game. Amazing. And it just went like the Stetson Bennett from the University of Georgia. Yes, now, sir. You know, it, I think it took him a few plays to get in there. You know, obviously, you're going to be nervous. Mm -hmm. and, and the level is different, uh, you know, on yeah. the program. You know that. The level is so much different. But Stetson, I mean, he looked good. I just, you know, he probably will wind up apparently on the depth chart, the uh, number right. three quarterback for – the Rams, but I think he's got I think he's got game that will play in the NFL, don't you? Man, Chris, he played against the best defense in the SEC, in the, not SEC in the country. So it he was playing. I don't want to say it's quite as much as the NFL, but probably a fingernail away from it. You know, the yeah. defense that he played against was amazing, and yeah. every day in practice, that competition, you know, it, it it sharpens the knife. It makes him hunger, makes him gives him an edge, and. You know, we talk about stories and how Kirby develops. You know, Stetson Bennett's story is amazing. Uh -huh. I, I constantly tell my son, like, about him. Like, man, you can't you can't even write that story. It wouldn't make it in Hollywood because it would be too unbelievable. Yeah. But the fact that how he was able to, to just change it and say, hey, this is who I'm going to be and this is who I am. I'm sticking to my laws. And then it worked out like it did. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. 
God. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's got to be a movie. I mean, it's yeah. just got to be a movie somewhere down the line. And, and you know, it was kind of apropos that he, he got drafted by L.A. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it, made, it made me mad to me. I'm yeah, I, I, but I, you know, it, and you know, as we we uh, apparently Carson Beck, you know, he's lined up maybe to be the starting quarterback for Georgia. Nothing official has been made, but or said, but you know, pretty much everybody thinks that Carson Beck will uh, be the starting quarterback. Now Carson, he's got all the he's got a rocket arm. And, uh, you know, he's he's a little more mobile, I think, than people give him credit for. Now, he's not Stetson as far as running ability is concerned, but he he can be, you know, he's not bad in uh, moving. Uh, so you got Carson, you got uh, Brock Vandergriff, you got Gunnar Stockton, you know, in the quarterback room, and, and then you're going to be adding Rayoli and Uglisi, you know, as All they right, come well. in with recruits. Uh, pretty impressive. My, 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 I wonder... You know, Stetson just had that intangible, man, that intangible ability for leadership. Uh, you know, Stetson, I, I think, had a chip on his shoulder that translated into him playing with confidence. And he was just going to show everybody that he was, you know, uh, should be the quarterback of the University of Georgia. You know, I don't, I, I don't know Carson Beck personally. Uh, he's a very talented guy. You just kind of wonder, okay, you want Carson to have that attitude too. You know, I, I don't think Stetson was – Arrogant on the field, I think he was confident on the field. I he had a little arrogant streak off the field, but I think <laughs> on the field, I think uh, you know that uh, Stetson was was very confident. I, I want Carson to have that same kind of like swagger, you know, where you do the phone to the Tennessee fan. <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, yeah, well, you the, think thing, the thing with that is though, each yeah. player, each player has to bring their own things to the table. Um, right. You know, we might not necessarily need that. We maybe have somebody else that that could ooze that 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 uh, charisma to do that. You know, I, what I, all I want and all I ask is him just to play in his lane, do what he right. does best, right. and just and just get bring the team. You know what they need. This is this is another win. This is another championship. Yeah. Just stick with us. Stick with the team and do what you do. And I think he'll be fine. Yeah, you know, I, I don't always agree with Paul Feinbaum, but we do go over. But uh, <laughs> but he did put uh, you know he he put Carson in his top five quarterbacks in the country, and I agree with that. I I've got Carson on my Heisman watch list. I, I think he's going to have a great year uh, for Georgia. Georgia's just so stacked offensively and defensively. You know, as you look forward to the season now, you know uh, Georgia initially the schedule looks pretty favorable for Georgia. Uh, you know, Oklahoma was supposed to be in there, but the SEC messed that up. Um, and, uh, you know, make, made a substitution on the schedule uh, for Oklahoma. Um, so as you look at the schedule, I've been looking at the schedule. I, I think the games, there's two games you got to watch, and that's Ole Miss at home and Tennessee away, and those are back-to-back games uh, in the schedule. If I think if there's a, you know, a concerning part of the schedule for Georgia, that may be it. What do you think? I mean, yeah, SEC is the SEC. You know, you can lose any Saturday. But I, I don't think people are giving South Carolina enough credit. Yeah. Uh, man, yeah. Coach Beamer's down there doing some things with the program. He's getting them kids to buy in. And once you can get a coach and get the team to buy in to what you're selling, I mean, you got to watch out for them. And South Carolina was always the pivotal game. So I always look at that game and I'm a nervous wreck every time we play that game because it would all depend who was going to have a decent season. You know, that's right. how it used to be when we played. You know, we won, we were going to have this season. They won. You know, they may win one or two more, but that would be about it. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I understand. Yeah, but, uh, but that's the one I'm looking – I'm more intrigued the most because that's our first look at uh, uh, somebody that's gunning for us, I think, that we have to right. have the opportunity to try to knock us off the pedestal. Uh, Spencer Adler, he, he's he's okay quarterback. He had a great – he had a great end of the season with that big win over Tennessee and – and Spencer and I, I just I lo- I'm like you I love Shane Beamer I, I just I you know I love his honesty you know in his I press conferences that. never will forget when uh, you know a couple of years ago when Georgia just really took South Carolina out and they were asking that, yeah. him about the game you know and he was talking about all these five stars that Georgia <laughs> had <laughs> uh, but he's just so honest and I, I I think Shane Beamer I think he's gonna he's gonna be he's doing a great job at South Carolina. I think you know I'm with you. He, there's is something to watch uh, there. Uh, so uh, you, you know I um, who's gonna win over in the West? You you got Alabama, you got LSU, you got Texas A and M. 
Arkansas is not bad. Uh, they may not be at the level with the other guys. So, uh, and this year is the last year of the divisions, you know, and then it's all going to be together. So as you, as you look over across the pond, I would say, in the uh, SEC West, who do you think's coming out of who? Who are who is Georgia going to play in the SEC championship game? Let's put it like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I would typically make the same bet and go with Alabama, but LSU, you know, seems well. They made it to last year, so I don't see why they don't have a fair shot. But out of those two, uh, I think I would probably lean more towards Alabama. Uh, yeah. I mean, Nick Saban is hungry. He he lost. I mean, he hasn't won it in two years, so I know. He's looking to try to come back, and he's got them kids something to believe in. That's the yeah. thing I worry about, Kirby. What do, how do you sell these kids? You know, had to have that same hunger, where yeah. as Nick Saban said, "Look, they, they crying in Georgia. I'm, I'm dead and buried. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm has to be in there." And yeah. that infuriates me because I know how you keep barking that in a in a locker mm-hmm. room. You keep barking that on the field. How you can buy in and you can tie into it before you know it. That's your identity. So yeah. I just. I just I'm curious about our, our identity. Um, they have a, a practice for us, a scrimmage this Saturday that's right. open to the alumni to the Letterman. Yeah, uh, I was headed down there. I'm not sure now. My son they picked up a, a extra jam, a jamboree game, so I might be in North Pond in in, a, in the scorching yeah. heat, pounding. <laughs> so oh man, up. it is August in Georgia, isn't it, brother? Ooh. I'm telling you, it is. Ooh. August and you know the thing about Nick Saban is I think he just spent a gazillion dollars on some kind of house on the ocean uh, somewhere. Yeah. So you know that may be an indication. Nick saying, you know, I might give it one or two more seasons, you know, <laughs> and go from there. I don't, I don't know. You know, just college football is fun. Uh, <laughs> we're a couple of weeks away. It's just fun. I'm ready for uh, college football uh, to get underway, and and uh, I know you are. Uh, you are as well. Here's here's my teams. Out of these teams, these teams can make the playoffs and win the national championship. See what you think. See what you just give me off your cuff. What do you think? I, I picked out some teams that I think uh, can make the playoffs in 2023. If you make the playoffs, you got a shot to win the national championship. Number one I've got is Georgia, obviously. Then I got Michigan and Florida State. I like Florida State. You know, Ooh. interesting. Okay. Ohio yeah. State, USC. Uh, Alabama, LSU, Tennessee, Penn State, Washington, Clemson, and Oregon. I know that I think out of those teams, we're going to get our four playoff teams. And, you know, obviously one of those four will win the national championship. Am I, am I, did I leave off anybody? Do I need to delete somebody? What do you think? Uh, it's, it's a pretty solid list. Um, you know, I like to respect uh, the West Coast. Did you say USC? You did yeah. say USC, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, so, USC. What about Utah? You, you, did you put Utah on your list? They might, be, they might be the team on the outside looking in. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, the schedule is uh, it's favorable for them. You know, I don't think a lot of people give them credit. This is the last year, I would say, the Pac-12, the Pac can we still call it that? It yeah. still has it still have this power. So I right. feel like if, if Utah runs a, runs a gauntlet, they can be there. They can be there third or fourth. And they, they were good last year. Uh, you know, they were, they were solid last year. Uh, Kenville's been with us. Ken, of course, uh, played for the University of Georgia. We'll just call it back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> the late 1900s, yeah. <laughs> you know that, that was, you, you do know that was last century, right, Ken? <laughs> I know it. <laughs> oh, me. You and I have been around for a while, indeed. Uh, but uh, Ken's a great guy. Uh, Cedar Town, that's what I'm talking about. Cedar Town High School, perennial yes, uh, football power in the state of Georgia. He represents yes, Cedar Town wherever he goes. And, uh, Ken, it's been a lot of fun to have you on our program. Just yeah. good to sit around and talk about football, okay? Yes, and, sir. Uh, yes, sir. and thank you for joining us, and we'll try to talk to you soon. And if you go to that uh, if you go to that game, you go to that scrimmage on Saturday, I might call you and get some intel. How about that? Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, now, I'm going to swear, I'm gonna have to be uh, – you- have to blur my voice out, mess my voice up so people can't hear us me. But. I understand. I understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we can do that. We can be sneaky if we have to, right? <laughs> all right, Ken. God bless you, my brother. And yes, thank sir. you for being with us. You all right. Care.